Hello everybody, I hope you're having a good evening, and welcome back. So, as I believe that some of you are aware, Tusk is possibly one of my favourite horror films. I think it is criminally underrated. And with the film almost reaching 10 years old, I think, what better time to have a sequel? So in today's video, I've, uh... I've compiled here my pitch for Tusk 2. Some of this has sort of been talked about by, by director Kevin Smith. Let's go over my pitch for Tusk 2. So first of all, we open on the ending scene from Tusk with Wallace, of course, in the zoo. Wallace then proclaims, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. First, we need to go back to the beginning. Oops, not that far. Now, as he says this, we, uh, of course, get shown uh, some footage of a baby being born uh, with a fully grown mustache, of course, meant to be Wallace being born. So then we get something of a short recap of the first film as we see how Wallace Brighton was turned into this human walrus hybrid. Uh, we've all seen the film, we all know. Wallace explains to the audience that he was able to escape the walrus skin through therapy and surgery, and he was able to walk and talk again. However, his behaviour is still that of a primal creature due to him becoming full walrus. He explains that Allison has broken up with him and instead married Teddy, his best friend. This left Wallace heartbroken. However, he keeps a high head, hoping to get his life back on track. Wallace's alarm goes off and we watch as he gets out of bed and sits down to an enormous breakfast, complete with bacon, eggs, waffles, you name it. He takes one sip of his orange juice, looks at his watch and proclaims, I'm late for my interview. He runs out of his front door and he rides his bicycle to work as the opening credits play in the background. The music playing is I Am The Walrus by The Beatles, of course. After the opening credits, we cut to Howard Howe, who is of course still alive. He sat at his desk in a darkly lit room. Now, actor Michael Parks, who played Howard Howe in the first film, has sadly passed away. Uh, so replacing him will be actor Tobin Bell, uh, who played Jigsaw from Saw. Howard then begins a soliloquy. Ha ha ha. Those fools thought they defeated me. I, the great Howard Howe, have... I, the great Howard Howe, have come to exact my revenge. Soon, the whole world will become walruses, and I will soon have my own army. Enter Howard's sidekick, a small timid scientist named Neil Seal, played by Michael Cera. Um, sir, he mutters. What is it, Neil Seal? We've located the locations of Teddy, Allison, Gila Puente, and Wallace. Good. Bring them to me. It looks like we will have ourselves a little reunion. We cut to Wallace as he's being interviewed on TV about his experience. He talks about his experience with Howard Howe, including the recovery process. We see Vox Pop interviews of familiar faces, such as the two girls who work at the convenience store. And we even get cameos from Jane Silent Bob, Randall and Dante from Clerks, and even the man behind the ad hoax which inspired the original film. That one's not even a joke, that's just a good idea. After this, we see Wallace after the interview backstage, as he shakes hands and is photographed by the press, reporters shoving microphones in his face such as, Wallace, have you heard from your girlfriend? And, Wallace, do you really eat fish? And, Wallace, is it true that you have an aquatic mammal fetish? We get a zoom in on Wallace's sweaty face as the background goes blurry and the audio begins to be muffled. Wallace then notices a familiar face in the crowd, the face of Howard Howe smiling at him with an evil grin. This is the last thing Wallace sees before he passes out. So then we cut to the uh, final act. It's a it's a short film, well, it was a work in progress. Um, but Wallace wakes up in a wheelchair and looks down at a horrifying sight. His prosthetic legs have been removed, because if you remember, he doesn't have any legs. He turns his head and sees Allison, Teddy, and Detective Guy Le Pointe, all with their legs removed. Howard Howe and Neil Seal then walk into the room. Howard explains that as revenge, he's going to turn them all into walruses, and after that, they can aid him into helping collect more people, creating an army of walruses. Neil Seal, put them to sleep, says Howard. Neil Seal looks up at Howard. No. What? proclaims Howard. I won't do it. Your wicked ways have gone too far, Mr. Howe. It must come to an end. Howard looks at Neil Seal, furious. Then you will become a walrus too. Wallace then wheels himself in front of Neil Seal. If you want him, you're going to have to get through me. Allison then wheels in front of Wallace. And me. Then Teddy. And me. Et moi, says Guy Lepointe. The jig is up, pal, Wallace says confidently. Howard shakes his fist. Darn it, I would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for you meddling kids. He storms off. This won't be the last time you hear from the great Howard Howe. Wallace looks at his friends. Well, gang, we did it. Teddy puts his arm around Wallace's shoulder. Looks like the real walruses were the friends we made along the way. Neil Seal then utters his famous catchphrase. I'm still working on what that catchphrase might be, but it's going to be really good, trust me. So then the credits begin to roll. I'm thinking some sort of music that's like, you know, heartwarming and inspiring, but also fun and, you know, saying which is a real crowd pleaser. I'm thinking maybe Watermelon Sugar. 
um, or Yummy by Justin Bieber. And so that's my pitch for Tusk 2. So I'm looking for donations. Um, there'll be a link in description. Uh, donate whatever you can. You know, the goal is about 50,000. Um, but you know, any donation from like a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand, you know, it really doesn't matter like how big or small. Um, but anything would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I'll see you guys later. How do you turn...